Welcome to The Push. My name is Steve Machine Curran. And I'm Kevin Big Daddy Allwood. And today we have the lovely Al Cooper. Hello. Bondi L. Hi, Al. Hey, guys. <laughs> and this is episode 32. 32, yes. 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 Um, so the how was the ride back um, from Bondi with the um, Brazilian masseuses? It was great, actually. <laughs> See, they are <laughs> real. Very entertaining. <laughs> yes. Well, did they have clothes on? Yeah, they had clothes oh, today. Okay. Usually, Swimmer tops. I, I, okay. <laughs> yeah. Usually they don't. <laughs> Um, we should have got some footage of the yeah, three of them. Did you get any photos? Together. No. I oh, okay. They might have some. Ask okay. Them. I will. I will. They're just um, they're cleaning the uh, Lamborghini downstairs at the moment. <laughs> That's good. But back to reality. Um, how are you? You've been working hard? I'm great. I've been working hard. I've been at the gym at Iceberg since 5.45 a.m. Really? Mm -hmm. Those early starts are tough, aren't they? They are tough. Steve was at the gym around that time. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Yeah. Five. yeah. yeah. And um, I've got this thing happening on my arm. Like I just, show, I've got this big bruise, and um, I'm a bit concerned about it. I don't know what it's from. I'm a bit concerned as well. <laughs> Over, too much overuse with the wrist action. There, well, I'm so. right-handed, so it shouldn't be. Oh, <laughs> uh, right. left hand. Maybe. Yeah. You're off the hook. Okay. <laughs> um, but so, L, um, you've got a really amazing story. Uh, you've done some, like you actually. I get tired actually reading your CV because you've done so many different things, lived in different countries. Um, but the first thing I wanted to actually, um, because I think that the thing with my phone's not, the thing that, um, I think is really cool is the journey you made from when you were 16 to like the shape you are now. Yeah. I just want to show this photo because this is, um, tilted. There we go. This is 16 year old L and then, um, I think 26, 26 yeah. when you competed, yeah. um, so that's a pretty amazing transformation. We'll get to that in a second. But so what people probably don't know is that you're also um, a musician as well. Yeah. And um, what else did you do? Uh, you taught English. Yeah. And um, you're also an IFBB judge. Yeah. And a bikini competitor as well. Correct. And um, so get, with regard to the musicianship, how did that come about? Well, I love playing music since I was young. So from when I can remember... I was sitting at the piano, playing piano, playing the recorder, playing with all the instruments that mum had at home. So your mum was a... So mum was a music teacher. Right, okay. And she loved music. So okay. So she taught me to play from a young age. Right. And then when I hit high school, what, age 13, I wanted something more exciting, so I played the drums. Okay. Did yeah. you... Uh, my brother played the drums. Was it unpainful for the rest of the family? <laughs> It was. <laughs> Did you like where were you set up in the garage or well, something? Well, mum and dad thought it might just be a phase, so they told me to go. We have this caravan in the backyard. Okay. And I literally, I literally set up the pots and the pans, and oh, they said right. if you prove that you want to play, we'll get you a drum kit. So six months worth of playing the pots and the pans. Literally, I would bang my heart out on the pots and pans, awesome. and then proper they bought me sticks. my first. Probably. Yeah, proper drumsticks. That would have been horrible. And then they for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it was right down the backyard. We're talking Port Macquarie, big backyards. Right, okay. So, and um, and from there you went on to form a Christian rock band. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Hang on, because <laughs> when you got the real drums, did yes. you have to set them up in the caravan as And well? I set them up in the caravan, right. the poor neighbours. Awesome. That's yep. cool. Yep. And uh, so, okay, so Christian rock band with uh, all girl bands, yeah? All girls, yeah. Christian Five girls. Rock. What Christian rock were you? Well, we were Christians, and so we just wrote... Christian music. Well, and you were like right into that. Yeah. Christian stuff. Yeah. Like Christian life. <laughs> hashtag. Yeah. And are you still, no, you still, no. um, you still go no to religious. church and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, I go to Hillsong. Okay, cool. Yeah, right. and I'm, I'm looking to play in the band again at yeah. church. Yeah. Okay. Um, what were some of the, so you actually wrote the song, were you involved in the songs? Yeah, I was involved in the songwriting. So we had our main, gu our main guitarist, the lead singer, and myself right. would create the songs. What were they about? Um, we just sing about life in general. Okay. Yeah, life in general. Like once one of the girls' dogs ran away in the middle of the night when it was storming, yeah, right. and we we're all out looking for the dog, and she was sitting there writing a song as we were, <laughs> yeah, looking for the dog. Okay. So, <laughs> and so this then morphed into like a uh, like a legit rock band, right? Yeah, and then right. we started to do competitions, and then um, we do demo tapes, um, and then we won a couple of awards, like um, Australian Artist of the Year. And the Young wow. People's Award, yeah. Oh, cool. And then we were on Triple J and different magazines and stuff. And uh, did you do Unearthed? We were on uh, uh, I don't think we did Triple J on Earth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the name of the band? Pink Stick. Pink so, Stick. Was it always, was it always <laughs> Pink Stick? Freudian. Freudian Stick. It was. So five Christian it. girls. 
playing in a rock band <laughs> and they called themselves Pink Stick. And they didn't... You, go, you yeah, tell no the story. Idea. So, no idea. <laughs> no idea. Um, it's embarrassing now. But we called it... We're all surfers as well. And yep. your surfboard was called your stick. And right. one of the girls had a pink surfboard. So we're like, oh, pink stick, that's go. Right. Of course. <laughs> wow. That's, and it that's was only like a year later <laughs> after we had... It took them a year to realise. Band t-shirts, band badges. We were already like on our album cover as Pink Stick. We had a band manager doing tour as Pink Stick that someone said, hey, it sounds like this. And then we went home, you know, told our parents, friends, and everyone's like, yeah, didn't you know? And we're like, no. A lot of bands are named like that, though. White Snake. Yeah, I know, but they're rock band. Like, these are five Christian girls. 10CC. You know what 10CC? You know band 10CC? Yeah. You know what 10CC? Yeah, it's the amount of ejaculate. Oh, I didn't know that. 10 mil. 10 mil. That's a lot of... I guess we joined the club. Yeah, that's a lot of... There's a lot more. They're obviously not dating a bodybuilder. No. So... 3CC. To rename it. Anyway, so... um. So, so you found you 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 got the name of the band. You're right. Yes. <laughs> um, and did you did you do some touring? Well, you recorded. Uh, we we only did a we had a tour planned. Uh, we used to travel just from like Newcastle, Central Coast, and Sydney. Right. Like we played at home nightclub. We when was this? Was this like early two thousand? This was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Ten years ago. Oh, so. Ten or so years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The noughties. Yeah, mm. so you played at home. Well, you played some legit gigs, like yeah, we okay. played at the Superdome. Yeah, you said what twelve thousand people? Yeah, twelve thirteen thousand people. And yeah. you kept the name Pink Stick. Yeah, <laughs> but then did you, so you 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 were saying before that your audience sort of became this like what, grunge sort of um, emo. Oh yeah, because our music just got heavier and heavier. So right. before you knew it, we were playing like emo screamo music. The whole crowd emo, was emo, in emo, black, emo. you know, with the big plugs in the ears. Right. This kind of semi mullet emo hair going on. And what were you guys dressing as? Were you... um, oh, I used to wear skinny leg jeans with right. like high top black Chuck Taylors, studded belt everywhere, big hoop right. earrings. Right. Like were some of the blonde? girls. Were you blonde? I was multicolored. I had blonde chunks, brown chunks, right. black so chunks. Rock, rock, we put rock pink shit. in the hair. Oh, yeah. Semi mullet used to spike it with the bandana around and it's my fitness orientated then? No. no. Okay. I was in the newspaper as the drummer girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was always in the newspaper playing. On drums. her Facebook profile, she's got she's playing the drums. On oh, where's that Bondo? Oh, where's that's that? at Port Macquarie. Port Macquarie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I played on the X Factor in the backup band one year. Drums yeah. as well. So. Cool. Just haven't touched them for a while. You've got to go back. It was to that. before I had the clean fit look. You know. You've got to. You've got to. You've got to get back into that. <laughs> How many fit chicks like a, a musician like rock musicians? Oh, that's a, a great, few, but is there? Oh, pink's pretty fit. <laughs> no, but like legit, like competes and stuff. All oh, right, yeah, no, I do not know. I just think it's cool that, like, mm. you know, she's multifaceted. It's a good thing. You it's know? a good thing. Um, so you, you're a country girl, Port Macquarie. Yeah. Um, how was that growing up there? That was great. Yeah, like relaxed. Well, we used to just go on adventures. We'd be riding motorbikes through the bush, shooting mm. the slug gun in the backyard for fun. Um, we'd go forward driving in the sand dunes, slide right. down the sand dunes. Yeah, yeah. Dogs, surfboards. And yeah. you, um, so you were playing in bands and then your mum got, um, so at one stage you went to Korea? Yeah, Is so that... I quit the band to move to South Korea when I was 20. Yeah, and you taught English. And I taught Korea. English to, yeah, yeah for How two was that? years. That was, that was great. Very interesting culture. Very interesting. They're very hardworking. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, like strong work ethic. Mm. Um, we were talking last, I think it was the last podcast or the one before, because uh, Korean, because it's obviously a big uh, plastic surgery Oh, yeah. And Korean yeah. girls get, um, I, th- I think we talked about this when we mm. trained, they get Botox in their calves. Yes. Because they don't want to have big they calves. They don't want calves. Yeah. So as well as skin bleaching, because they don't want yeah, tan skin either. skin bleaching. And they get their eyelids flipped up. Yeah. Yeah. So they get European eyelids. <clears throat> mm. Very odd behavior. Mm. Very strange. We're the opposite. Like, you know, obviously we like having a tan. We like to be brown. I'd like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um... <laughs> I was just going to talk self obsession again. I just want to get fillers here, like, so I don't look like so angry all the you time. You're just Thanks. such an angry man, Steve. I am an. I, I'm. I'm not really angry, am I? <laughs> no, you're not angry. Um, no. So, uh, you, then your mum got sick, right? Yeah, when I was sixteen. Yeah. Mum got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Yeah. Um, and it made me become a lot more health oriented. Yeah. And people oriented. 
So you were back in Australia. And um, so w when did you decide? So you started researching nutrition and things like that? Yeah, said, I yeah. became really interested in nutrition. Right. And that coincided with the age that I decided I needed to lose weight because right. I was very chubby as a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. So it all happened at age 16. So you started training in Port Macquarie? Yeah. Uh, okay. So I just took myself to the gym, bought myself a gym membership. Um, when we had uh, Riri on here, like I kept asking her, well, did you have a mentor? Or, it's funny, yeah. you know, because cause I, like, I assume that when a woman starts training that they have to have someone to guide them, but I don't expect that of a man. It's just, it's, it's like sexist in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you just did this yourself, right? Well, I... I took myself to the gym, so I, I used the money that I'd saved up from working at the supermarket right. and decided I wanted to lose weight. I went to the gym, and a trainer at the gym did a very basic program, mm. um, but also I downloaded an ebook by Tom Venuto called Burn the Fat, Feed the Muscle, okay. and that was the first time I read about bodybuilding, so I right. printed off sheet after sheet after like this many sheets, and, how old were you then? and I studied, 16. Yeah. So I started to study. I bought a few different ebooks, right. and I, I read all of his book, and that's right. when I really learned. Um, yeah, how to burn the fat, feed the muscle. Right. And within probably two years, I very slowly um, lost my body burn fat. Burn the fat and build the muscle. Yeah, burn the fat, build the muscle. And yeah. I went from probably size 14 to 16 to a size 8 yeah. in two years. Yeah. So just gradually learning, experimenting. Yeah. Um, you know. And yeah, so from there, you um, went. So how long ago, how long was it from then until you competed? Um, so I first competed probably, so that was age 16, probably yep. nine years after that. Right. And I competed because people at the gym would ask me, Just, do you compete? Yeah. And I was like, compete in what? <laughs> and, I, and I didn't realize there was a competition for this. And when I learned there was a competition for this, I went and got a trainer. And competed, not you, knowing You realize though anything. that like, the, the, that's the, the bodybuilding <laughs> the bodybuilding pickup line. For, to hit on a girl without, Do you with, yeah, with, a, I with without, with, yeah, for sure. We talked about that we, without s sounding creepy. Is to say, oh, do you compete? Or because it's like, it's a backhanded compliment, right? It's a compliment, but it's yeah. not a creepy compliment. Yeah. Or that's true. Uh, you know, are you getting ready for a show? It's such a. This is. It's true. such a line. I've In, said that to lots of people, but of course I'm not, you have. I'm not hitting on them, please. I'm not. <laughs> I it's, said I talked. I talked to Gabriella back in two thousand. Yeah, you're probably hitting on it. <laughs> in fact, we were at a party. It was actually Barsha's Barsha's twenty. You know Barsha. Oh yeah, right? actually yeah. yeah. It was actually her twenty first, and I was there with Gab and um, William Jovis was there, right? Yes. And um, and he, he was he was systematically trying to hit on all the girls, especially the girls that were, that were training. Yes. And he's he he said to he said to Gabriella, do you, he didn't know we were together, oh, and he no. said, oh, do you compete? Uh, and we just she just burst into like, burst into like hysterics. It's a line, anyway. You know now. You know now I, I know. Like. This is a Christian rock girl when you're coming out. You see, very a bit naive. Too naive. Chris, uh, Christian Sydney. rock and country girl. And we called the band Pink Stick. And you called the band Pink Stick. Exactly. So over those two years of yep. transformation, yep. from sixteen to eighteen, mm. when you lost kilos of body fat, presumably. Mm -hmm. um, mm. How did that change your? Presumably, you you improved confidence, self confidence, mm. and 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 felt better. Mm. And obviously. Correct. Yeah. Um, did you have did you have self esteem issues at all when you were the younger age and, and overweight? You know, I was extremely shy as a kid, and mm. I got paid out at school for not talking. People would say, "Do you even talk?" Oh, really? And yeah, and so I so yes, losing the weight somehow. It did make me more confident, mm. and I guess I found my voice a lot more. Yeah. So yeah, it did. It it just helped with my overall confidence. Well, that, yeah, that's to be expected. And mm. ninety, I mean, it would have improved your looks too, because ninety nine percent of people can improve their facial looks if yes. just by getting leaner, just they, by losing weight, getting their body exactly. into shape. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, the well, as you said, build muscle and, and mm. losing fat. Um, mm. and I think. Most people's problem is a lack of discipline yeah. Yeah. and laziness. Yeah. Um, to do that, to actually apply themselves, like you said, two years, right? And that's exactly that's the sort of length of time you have to commit to yes. mm. to make to, a serious change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and people what what I'm where I'm heading to is this the body positive. Yeah. Mm. And that that people um, are their own worst enemy. 
people who are overweight, obese people, they're like, they, they, they say they're too far gone. They, or they, they, mm. they say that they can't. They blame something else other than their own lack of discipline. discipline. But with a body positive movement that's happening now, right? I don't know if you follow any of these girls on Instagram. They're basically, they're being told it's okay to be really obese. And when they look at someone like Elle, mm. I think we talked about this, um, their initial reaction can be, oh, it's easy for her. Uh, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like she came yeah. out of the womb like that, mm. right? Yes. And I think, I don't think people, I don't think they're doing this, the, themselves or that community any favors because it's sort of negating the hard work you put in, but also it's sort of negating the fact that you can still have a balanced lifestyle. Like, the mm. fact that she's, you know, she's a musician, she did all these other things and just happened to do this as well. It doesn't define who she is as a mm. person. That's right. Do you know what I mean? Like, because I just think, um, it's just too easy to just say, okay, I give up and I'm, and I'm okay with like being like this because mm -hmm. I've got, you know, I, I follow this person who tells me it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think that these people fail to realise is that it's, it's not a competition against other people that you have. It's a competition within mm -hmm. yourself about yeah. what you yeah. can do for yourself. And the thing mm -hmm. is that everyone is capable of winning in that competition. Yeah. Every single person can improve their body, their, their body composition, and therefore improve their looks, yeah. and they lose the fat off the face, yeah. and therefore improve their confidence and their self-esteem, and you can win. You can win at this. Because yeah. you're not competing against the guy next to you, no. the girl next mm. to you. You're competing against yourself. It's an internal thing. And it, it's only once you achieve it, like we've so you all achieved realize. it, that you realise yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. what it is. It's a competition yeah. within yourself. Mm. Steve and I struggle to stay eating clean food for more than a week. Like we're, we're, every time we do a podcast, we say, oh, it's day one, it's day again. one again. But we're actually up to day five right now. Yeah, we yeah. started on Sunday and it's now day five and we're, we're on, in the zone and on track mm. to, um, to, to, to do it properly. But the, I mean, mm. but like we're talking in the car, like you, I'm mean, sorry, mm. you were talking, um, the Brazilian masseuses told me in the car that you, um, <laughs> Because you, you you had you know you you ate some cakes and stuff like that when you were um, in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, did you? So when you do stuff like that, yeah. when you eat like a normal normal person. Do you feel guilty? Do you feel Do you punish yourself mentally? No, I have this thing, either, either eat it and enjoy it without feeling guilty, or if you're gonna feel guilty, don't eat it because you won't enjoy it. So yeah. I'm like one or the other, and I tell my clients as well. I'm like, have a cheat meal. I want you to cheat, but make sure you enjoy it. Yeah. If you sit there and eat it and feel guilty, then you're in trouble. No regrets. Our so, problem is often one or the other. we don't stop mm. after that one meal. <laughs> <laughs> well. We just, the floodgates open and it's just have you had, have you had, What about uh, eating issues? Have you ever had any eating issues? Some yeah, food, look, food sort of disorders? Yeah, when I was younger, I did in my early 20s. Um, right. I think it, it coincided with a bit of a... I guess it was a hard patch in life where I was... Right. My, like, I guess you could say I was quite depressed. Right. And so I learned that sugar makes you feel good. And Oops. so I actually went through Chocolate. a stage where mm. I'd start to binge and then I'm like, oh, no, I better not eat right. to, make to make up, up for, for it. it. And I, I yo-yoed until I actually went to get help from a psychologist. Okay. Yep. And so she helped me with that. Yeah, that's good. Because um, it, I mean... It's more common than what you think. Yeah. And, and oh, for sure. At least fifty percent of young girls who come to me have some type of binge eating disorder. Right. Right. So. Yeah, yeah and I think, I, and I think the fact that um, if you can just train, get to the gym, mm. and focus on getting stronger, yeah, rather than actually the physical transformation, yeah, the body sort yeah. of takes care of itself. You yeah. Know? And then you want to eat better just yeah. to support your training. Yeah. Do you find that with your. Do you have a lot of young female clients? Um, yeah, I have over the years. I've had a lot. And there's a large problem with them staring at these perfect images on social media sure. yes. and thinking or, or looking up these fad diets. And I'm trying to tell, I've had to say you need to eat more and they're scared to even touch breakfast. Yeah. I'm like, don't be scared. Just I'm like, just stick to the plan for two weeks, see how you feel. Yeah. And they're scared to eat. Yeah. They think they need to starve Terrify themselves, the which, which just makes us... This terrible cycle. Yeah. But there's people selling programs who are misinformed. They're selling these terrible, unhealthy programs. Yeah. 
two young girls and it's stuffing yes. up their metabolism and giving them an yeah, eating disorder. Yeah, exactly. and, yeah, we talk about that. I've yeah. got a friend um, who uh, was who went who lost weight through Vision PT, mm-hmm. and uh, for, she was on nine hundred calories for six months. What nine hundred? <laughs> no. Yeah, she's she's That's, she's staunch, so she did yeah. it and lost weight. But with Maddie, she um yeah nine hundred calories for six months. Yikes. And uh, that's like standard that's, practice for them, I think. Yeah. Super low calories. Um, that's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, but that's I've heard of PTs doing that at Agin. Yeah, I know. Madness. There's a lot of PTs yeah. that are it's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> but you're at um, you're at uh, icebergs, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. at Bondi well, icebergs. I, um, it's a, it's beautiful there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do any work though. I think I just want to go to the beach and lay yeah. the yeah. sun out in the day. Well, yeah. everyone kind of does stop as the sun rises to go take a photo. Yeah. And then yeah. someone sees a whale and we all take a photo. You see someone whales? Someone sees How a dolphin. You see whales out there when they Look, it's coming up to whale season. Oh, and wow. in whale season, you might see them every day. Really? But wow. it's only for a few weeks. Okay. What do you see? Just the spout of water. Yeah, you see the spout break. of water. Once this whale came right into the bay. Wow, and cool. it was followed by three dolphins. Wow. And a sometimes couple of paddle boarders, some, yeah. Sometimes you see some whales on the beach. <laughs> yeah, see, I knew you were going to say that. That's not very nice. That's, <laughs> That's not, a not, joke. Was, I, was, I, I was actually going to say, do you see whales at the gym sometimes? Sometimes. But that's not, a, that's not very appropriate. That's not very body positive. No. Not, not very body positive. No, it's not. Yes. Do, they, do you ever see the whales like on the treadmill? Come on. <laughs> come on, that's not good. <laughs> you know what though? Like, um, oh, the actual ones. The actual whales that are break the water, you know, get them in the gym. So you're gonna, yeah, we're gonna um, Love upset people. Are you um, you you're getting ready for a show now. Yeah, I am oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. Really? I haven't competed in about five years. Mm. Cool. When is yeah. it? October it's or something. In, I'm gonna aim for the mid year show. I'm mid-year. just gonna see how my body pulls up. When, mm. Otherwise, that? I'll go October. Like uh, July. End of July. Yeah. Okay. So what I've got a bit of work to do. I want to stick to the IFBB. Because you're currently, you're a judge as well, aren't you? Yeah, I've just currently, um, I've recently stepped back from judging because right. I'd like to, to compete, compete again. Yep. And I just don't want to mix the two. I want to be yep. able to focus on one Have or the other. Conflict in yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yep. exactly. I, I, um, I, over the course of the podcast and in general, I've given bikini competitors a hard time because most of them don't train very hard. But I've trained... Men's bikini? No, women's bikini. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Men's bikini, I still do the a hard bikini time boys. Too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, but I've tried. I was saying to Elle, like I've tried. The, the she's probably the hardest training girl I've trained, apart from Maria Andreano. Really, she's a warrior. Yeah, yeah. And bikini competitor. It's still bikini. Yeah. Bikini. Yeah. 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 Even though your shoulders are too big. <laughs> well, apparently so. We're yeah. done training upper body. Yeah. So uh, uh, just on that, you <laughs> mentioned before we started, before we flicked the um, tech cameras on. I was just going to say, um, like, so uh, you've worked on TV shows and yeah. world production and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you find it intimidating coming into our studios given the like, level of technology we have, like, because it's, you know, the, the staff the running around. that we have here. The <laughs> I was just tech. confused which camera to look at. Yeah, like, yeah. that one or is it that one or yeah, that one? I know, and I know. It's, it's all right. It's okay, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so competing nine weeks to go? Nine About weeks? Nine weeks, yeah. Okay. I've got a lot of work to do in nine weeks. I... I forgot what I was going to say. Was Nine weeks. Um, so, uh, do you know what sort of calories you're on? Do you, do you count calories? I'm on, or? yes, it, it's rotating a little. Some days are about 2,000 and some okay. days are just under. Right. So, I might need to take it back a bit because okay. my body type does love to hold weight, whether right. it be muscle or fat. Yeah. And uh, it's good at putting on weight. Yeah. Back to the training. You said that she trains hard. Yeah. Um, those bikini girls, you, they just don't have. <clears throat> Their body fat's just not super, super low. They want to keep those curves, so they need to not take their body fat so low. They still have shape. Yeah. So they have to train hard to get that yeah. shape. Yeah, the ones in the, the, like the, the elite level ones, they're, um, they're, full of, they're serious athletes. Yeah. I guess yeah. I just, it's just a thing, and it's the same with the men's bikini now, you know, where guys have been training for a week and they're going to do a show. And, and girls are like that. There's a lot of girls like that as well. They've been training for a mm. week and... I'm getting ready for my first show, and mm-hmm. it's like yeah. I'm carbs are pl- like, and then they're, yeah, and they're carving up, and they're doing peak week, and they're like twenty percent body fat. You need the you need the cannon fodder entrance there. You know, there's there's out of twenty on the stage, there's going to be ten that really probably are just yeah. making up the X. numbers, right? X. Yeah, yeah exactly. and then straight and, away. No, like, no. Uh, you're right, but uh, bikini's considered an entry level mm. category well, division do you, do you, to go in, right? Do you um? I, I'm not trying to. Mm. bring what you do down because if you're winning then you're one of the champion bikini yeah. competitors but a lot of the girls who want to 
make a, a begin a, a begin their their on stage career, shall we say? Yeah. They start at bikini yeah. and perhaps work their way up if they're serious into fitness and then figure. What do you think of um? Uh, was it W? What's the called WBFF with the wings? Well, I think each to their own. If That's you're more into fashion, go to WBFF. You can't cop it personally. What do you? What do you? So, like how, is that the division that you were falling asleep in? <laughs> yeah, probably. I have okay. a lot of friends who compete oh, in sorry, that, so okay. I don't want to say. Sorry, girls. Anymore. It's uh, who knows? Maybe one day. It's uh, it's like a beauty pageant, though, isn't it? Really, it's a beauty pageant with a little bit of muscle. Yes, and I mean, some of the girls in the WBFF, they look insane. Yeah, they that's look true. incredible. And it's run completely differently, I guess. Like, it, it is more of a show, so they get more interaction from the audience. And You want, look, Stephen, th- those those divisions came in um, probably around the same time that all the men's board short and yes. the male model divisions came in. Yes. To lift the profile of the sport. Yeah. For well, the they're, general they're super popular, mm. aren't they? Like, they're super for, popular. For the general yeah. Public, yeah. You know? Very. When it was just the mass of freaks on stage... You, you could go to shows and there'd be hardly anyone in the crowd. No. Now they have all these model type true. divisions and it's, yeah, thousands beautiful of people. people. Mm. They patch yeah. out. They, 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 they. I was saying to Al before, because Gab, when Gabriella competed, mm. um, there was just women's bodybuilding and mm. it was like women's under 52 kilos right. or women's over 52 kilos. Right. That was it. Yeah. Mm. There, was no, there was no wings. No. <laughs> but not even a figure. In it a wasn't physique. even a figure. No. It wasn't even fi- No high heels. Under 52, over 52, yeah. Uh, so what's your ideal look for you? Do you want do you want to put more muscle, or are you happy with what the muscle I'm, you've got? Or I'm happy with the muscle I've got. Uh, genetically, I do tend to put on muscle on my upper body a lot quicker than the lower. So I've been working yeah. a lot on my legs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just need to lose a lot of fat, but I'm content with the amount of muscle. Right. And I want to stay in a bikini. Okay. I don't, I don't want to go up mm. to figure or anything. That's a, a more aesthetically pleasing look. Oh, for yeah. sure. Bikini, yeah. And look I mean, at, look at um, Katie coming down from mm. figure to bikini. It's a, it's a better look. The look, look. I, the the um the I like the wellness division, Brazilian mm-hmm. wellness division. Yeah. <laughs> I have actually big butt. Are the girls going in that? Yeah, actually, well, I'm I'm prepping them as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, the naturals for that division. Big butts with with a little bit of abs. Yeah. That's a good look. More full. Yeah. A fuller look. Yeah. When they don't have that division in uh, is, Australia. Is it coming? Mean, I think it's they coming. They've, they've just announced wellness. it, haven't they? They've got wellness in the IFBB Elite, and they're right. just introducing wellness to the IFBB Pro League. You could do that. So I could do wellness. Could they, could they, they, um, could they include that in any of our natty comps, natty, natty federations? Um, I'm not sure what the natural federations have. Yeah, a little chunky know. enough. I don't know. Um, yeah. We, it's funny, you're talking about... Um, Guys tend to say that you know, some guys say you've got big shoulders and things like yeah. that. Um, and I was talking to this person, <laughs> it's one of my clients actually, and um, we're talking about like men are often told that uh, they're that what they're attracted to is um, is uh, informed by society, and you know, the fact that we're attracted to curvy women with small waist, big butt, big boobs is like a um, it's 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 not genetically imprinted. It's like uh, we've been conditioned, manipul- by society. conditioned by society. Where I actually don't disagree. Because um, you like what you like. You right? like what you like to to, uh, to a degree. Yeah. Look, if that was true, I think we even touched on this before. If that was true, then all those runway models of the nineties that were skinny, like like Kate Moss bodies that are scrawny, little, skinny little things that look <laughs> like they get fall over in a decent yeah. wind, then. We should be attracted to that. I've never been attracted to no, it. No, even, like even though society was telling us we should be. Yeah, that fucking, that, that's <coughs> disgusting. What sort of, so you have a uh, type for males that you're attracted to? <coughs> that's a good question. Well, no one who is largely overweight for right. a start. I like strong guys though. Like, so you, that's I like fat a guy that's fat who can now. lift, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll rephrase that. I like a guy who can lift at least twice as much as me right. on any given exercise. There you go. Okay. <laughs> if not, then. So he's got to have Sorry. some level of fitness and and, yes. and and look after his body. Exactly. Right. Well, that yeah. makes sense. That mm-hmm. that's what you would expect most women, particularly a fitness type of woman, to be. To but like. there's people that will say that that's like you, you've been like uh, manipulated by society into believing that, and you should like anyone. It's weird, isn't it? So I just think it's weird. I think that's a bullshit. Have you heard, like do you know what I'm talking about? Like it's like mm, I do. I think that's some people's argument. 
Steve. I don't. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I actually don't think most people would agree with that. I think people like what they like, and because mm. we're not all the same. There's outliers. Like some people do like <coughs> BBWs. You know, B B beautiful women. Right. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> She's laughing. It's a thing. BBW. Yeah. It's like some that one. some women like BBC. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> That's right. Do, <laughs> do you know B, you know what BBC is? We'll tell you. Big black. Oh, <laughs> I thought it. Was, I thought it was a TV program on nature or something. No, it was oh, yeah. sort of. It's, 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 <laughs> right. Um. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> um. Okay, so no, there, is like, the, there is like a fetish for large people. Oh, Chub, well, there's fetish. I saw a show called Chubby Chasers. Really? It's about guys who, oh my gosh. who seek large, like really large. Really? Mm. Okay. There's a thing called there's, there's a thing called feeders where like you actually these people want to get their partners bigger and bigger to the point where they actually yeah. like keep feeding them. So they can't leave the house. So they can't. So the bed it's wow. like a power thing as well. <gasps> like so you, you, this girl, this woman, she was bedridden. So it's like she's going to die. She's bedridden and she was sucking lard through a straw <gasps> to because she just wanted to be bigger for her husband. Husband's like this little dweeby guy. Ooh. That keeps just bringing their pl- pl- plates and plates of food. It's very strange. Big KFC buckets of... Sort of hot, really, isn't it? <laughs> what? But it takes all types, I guess. There's on this same docu- this, this documentary, um, and this other guy, he was into cars. S- literally, like, he sexually, he sexually oh. um, pleased himself with cars. <laughs> Exhaust pipe. So he'd walk through a car park and start rubbing up against oh cars. Oh, my gosh. What? Yeah. Would he actually sh- yeah. shag the exhaust pipe? Uh, or no, just rub himself against like you're just very odd behavior. Anyway, I don't know how well. Look, why are we on the subject? If everyone Sorry. liked the same thing, there'd be not enough to go around. That's true. That's true. There has to be variety in what in what people like. You know, yeah. something like tall, short. This is true. Uh, like yellow, brown, Asian. Mm. <laughs> you know, big boobs, none. What about um, all sorts of varieties? What about races? Do you have like a preference? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no preference. Hundred meters. No preference. No, because like, <laughs> no, because like, I usually been attracted to more sort of like um, ethnic, dark, girl, like uh, you Mediterranean, know, Mediterranean, um, exotic looking, brown skin. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely yes. Are yeah. you like that too? Well, I was saying yes on behalf of Steve, but yeah, I do like that too. Latin. Should we say Latin? Latinos. Latino. Latino. Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, so what else can we talk about? Um, what so you, are you going to do? Like, you've done some of the TV stuff. We actually haven't mentioned that. The oh fact, yeah, the oh, um, yeah. Deadly, Down, know... Deadly Down Under. Yeah, that's the latest thing, right? I've seen a couple of those episodes. With... Have you? I have. Okay. I have because the the dude that hosts it, he's Maltese. Paul yes. Is mm. it pizza? So my partner's is Maltese, and she okay. said there she said go. his name is Maltese. He's Maltese, and then we watched the show. It's a guy from Pete. Was from... one where oh, pro- they're probably all the same. Drug, road the through the outback go to like a <laughs> go to like some pub and it's a bit, you know. yes he was always driving through the outback going to the pub yeah, right okay. basically having a cop I've never seen it yeah he's funny it's a, you know the guy you know but you did it like, he is very funny is he okay yeah he's on house and yeah he did pizza pizza, pizza, and, pizza. And, yeah, yeah, fat yeah. pizza fat pizza fat pizza yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's done stand like they do shows oh, he's like, funny okay it's yeah. the same he's joke. very funny to travel with as well okay um, so you're going to do more stuff like that? I'd love to do more TV work. Have you got, an, a- great. Have you got an agent? No agent. No Why? agent. Why? Well, what are you doing? I don't know. I guess I've just been busy doing other things. Okay. Doing just, personal training. But Do they hit you up directly to say, we're doing this oh, show? Oh, yeah, they just knew on? of me. They called me up. L. Bondi. Is that we Bondi got L? <laughs> we got this TV show coming up. Can you come in for the casting? I was like, okay. And they told me it was some Charlie's Angels thing. Right. And I'd never really watched Paulie's shows. And so I went there and it was in, an interview with them. Um, and then, I don't know, it just kept getting through the interviews. And then, congratulations, you got the job. Because on the show, there's, there's two girls. There's yeah. Alan is a junior one. Right, right. right. And the, the one epi- the episode that I'm recalling, yeah. you both, uh, you, you changed clothes into some sexy outfit or something. A bikini. Was Bikinis. It bikini? Always it's the bikini. red bikini. Yeah, okay. yeah. But at the end of the show, he was on a stage... In a pub, in oh a, in yeah, a pub, and I don't know. Could, 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 oh yeah, we had to go to the comedy act, yeah, or something, or do something. That's right, we? yeah, right. And uh, and you guys were. Involved. They called us up onto the stage, yes. Right. 
Yeah. I haven't seen it. The crowd was. Yeah. These, these are all like. They were crazy. Small outback towns. Oh, like, they, they were crazy. crazy. Yeah. But they would never seen anything like it. Right? No, never no. seen anything like it. No. I was told by one of the cameramen on the way we were driving. He's like, "Now, L, just laugh even if you don't find it funny, and do not look around with any of your snobby Bondi girl looks." And I was like, <laughs> Brian, I was like, Brian, I don't have those snobby Bondi girl looks. And within a minute into the show, I was looking at Brian, going. God, like, what are these girls wearing? Like, have some respect. Like, they were like, like I don't know. From, I, well, anyway, from the I'll stop there. <laughs> from the yeah. bush. From the bush. <laughs> right. So that's um, what's it called? Down under. Deadly down under. Deadly down under. What 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 other stuff have you done? As in TV yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. or or oh, mainly just infomercials, really. Right. I saw yeah. one. I saw one you did. Fitness infomercials. There was one for body sculpting stuff. They oh were, yeah, I've done. Putting, like, I've done a few advertisements for different companies, right. body sculpting clinics. But all that is fitness TV bullshit, work. right? Those infomercials. Yeah. I don't know if you're getting paid. Not if they're paying you. Though. When I was <laughs> sponsored by Body Science, I, they rang me and said we've been contacted to see if any of our athletes will go on an infomercial. It was one of those mm-hmm. like electric pulse things oh, that yeah, you yeah. stick on your abs and yeah. it's supposed mm-hmm. to make you ripped, right? And yeah. I was lean, and they wanted me to go. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do it i couldn't like, ethically you couldn't do it i couldn't i'd be like show me the money well, bitch <laughs> i've done one of those and the next day your abs are very sore so yeah, it, it stimulates the muscle but mm-hmm. it doesn't get you uh ripped no all right <laughs> um what would you like to be doing like you do you like your personal uh, training what if, I'd what love would be your to dream be, job well i'd love to be doing more tv work yeah like tv presenting and i'd also love to be playing music again I um I started to learn to G- DJ at one stage. Okay. And I played just a couple of gigs, but it conflicted with the whole personal training. You know, going to bed at two a.m. Like yeah, no, five, yeah. four a.m. Yeah. It yeah. Didn't really work. Yeah. Um, I guess <clears throat> it's it's hard to get to auditions and things like that as well if you've got yeah. s- specific clients. But I could see you doing de- doing a combination of that: drumming, DJing, and TV. Yeah, but you probably have. She plays piano as well. Used to. Right. You know, at, when you said you were wanting to get into the band at um, Hillsong, mm. would you, what, what instrument would you be? I'd do drums. Yeah, right. Do they have a drummer? Yeah, they're pretty good as well. You've got to be pretty good to get onto okay. the band. Yeah, into it's a band. big thing the music yeah. there, isn't it? The yeah, drummer they win yeah. Ario Awards. Um, well, there's a number of different drummers. Like, right. They've got heaps of different campuses, so... I've only ever seen guys up there though. Right. So I think it's time for change. Yeah. Yeah. Entry, time for a change. Point for <laughs> so maybe reform the pink sticks. <laughs> is, it, sorry, is it pink sticks singular S- or maybe. plural? Pink stick. Singular. Just one. Just one. S T I K. Oh, okay. See. Okay. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> they changed the band name when I left. What do they call it then? Valor- like, Valerie like, Chain. Valerie. Valerie Chain. Chain. What does that mean? What's that about? Valerie is a name. I don't know why they called it that. Is there a I Valerie? Make it up. No. Don't know. It doesn't seem to make sense. I don't know. Not all band make names make sense. No, no, none of the ones are. I, I used to sing in a band. Really? Yeah, I sang in bands. Can you uh, bust a tune? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, like I, I, um, I sang, but that's how I started training. I've talked about this on podcasts before. I want, you know, Michael Hutchins from In Excess, the mm-hmm. singer, right? So I want to be him, but like a, a muscular version of him. So yep. that's what I used to take my shirt off on stage. Yeah. And I want to have a six pack. So that's why I went to the gym. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, the rest is history. <clears throat> lost all my hair we could start the okay. push band well what do yeah. you play no I'm shit I'm, I don't do anything he raps he's a rapper I'm, uh, I'm musically what's on your shirt today oh, Ice Cube, Ice Cube. Oh, yeah. Ice Cube. Nice. what sort of music do you listen to well? first album well I love R&B at the moment right yeah okay um, hip hop as well a more bit just... of hip hop right like I like Kanye and oh Kev's yeah. a big fan of Kanye are you he hates him no <laughs> I am. We'll get I, he is shit. He really hates him. He doesn't understand. It's been an ongoing thing on the podcast. His looks are shit. His voice is shit. He's shit. Yeah, he's not a fan. Go Steve, well on a car trip. Steve has Kanye t-shirts. I've got, a, I've got a Kanye for president t-shirt. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's supposed to be 2020 next year. I don't think it's going to happen. No, he's not going to happen. One of my clients actually um, uh, met him and Kim K. He did, he, he's a hairdresser and he taught like high-end hairdresser and he did Kim K's hair and wow. he said Kanye was really nice really yeah. down to earth and polite yeah really well I met Anthony Mundine and he was the same <laughs> it's hardly on the same level no but the public persona is completely different to the reality so he, he may be really nice I think he'd beat Kanye in a fight 
I think you would. Maybe we could set that up. That could be um, Undine's next fight. <coughs> So the dating thing that's not real, you're um, single at the moment, yeah? Single. Single yes. and ready to mingle. Single and I don't have time for dating because I'm on comp prep. Right. Oh, okay. It yeah. is a very does, selfish does sort of exclude. Sport. Yes, yes, very yeah. selfish. Do you don't do the dating apps and stuff like that? No, I've, don't never, need to. I've never done the dating app. Yeah, don't need to. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine if she went on Tinder, you'd have, or oh, you have to Let's match with people imagine. before they can contact you. Do but, you? But okay. like, well, every single guy would be like going. You don't need Tinder and Bondi. We'll put it that way. Oh, really? No, you just walk along no. the beachfront. Do you get hassled? Sometimes. Yeah, well, you're saying... You're saying I, you're I heard a rumour. Okay. I heard a rumour. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I heard a rumour that you are not taking on any more male clients because every single one hits on you. Well... Is that true? Not, not entirely true. I'm okay. interested to... The room stories always get changed, don't they? Chinese yes, whispers. Yes. But I have a problem with male clients hitting on me, right. and I've had to fire a few over the years. Right. That's so sad. Or I just say I'm busy, or I give them the cold shoulder. Like in training, I wear a baggy t-shirt or zip up my jumper. Yeah. And I'll just be standing away from them, I, I and just, I'll be like next set. Very. I just think it's coldly. sad if you're you you're booking someone to hit on them. Mm, are they, yeah, they probably are. Do they train hard? Like, are they trying to? Are they, well, they I, I think get the, they are, but the imp- it's just yeah. embarrassing themselves. Yeah, I get the impression that a guy that's doing <laughs> that would do that is not. Is not. Yeah, actually, no. You know what I mean? No. And the way to probably impress you would be just to train hard, right? Like if you and not say anything not, and just be cool yeah. and just actually yeah. just train hard. Exactly. I once had a guy in who would ask me on a date. I'd said no to the date because mm. I didn't want to go on a date. So he he looked wa- for training. Yeah, of course. And then he wants to do legs. I'm like, all right, that's weird. To want to do legs he's skinny and i'm like what do you normally squat he's like oh about 120 i'm thinking i don't think so but we've got up to 80 and his little pin legs are shaking i'm like he's gonna snap so i'm like oh you must just be tired from training last time we'll stick here like yeah just it was embarrassing did um, he come back yeah and he books in again really <laughs> I had to get my boss at the gym to swing past and pretend he was taking him. Did you know that? Right. right. Okay. Anyways. Do you get, do you get, the, you know the term mansplaining? What's yes. That? Mansplaining. Okay. You get this all the time. Mansplaining is when blokes who like a has, who have no business, know nothing about the subject, but they're explaining it to you because they're a bloke. <laughs> you must get that with your, when you, you train, do you get guys coming up to you and go, you know what love? Mate, have you thought about doing like this? Or? Yes. and That's mansplaining. Explaining to me why we do a drop set, all sorts of interesting things like that. Yes, like yeah. as if I don't know about drop sets. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. It's... Or do you want me to move the... The funniest is, do you want me to move the bench for you? Like, do you well, need yeah. help? Do you like, need like, assistance like, moving like, the bench? Yeah, well, you like probably you do. I'm like, well... You're pretty, pretty little weak little <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. if I couldn't move a bench, I'd be... Out of work. <laughs> Ga- Gabriella would get that. Like I told you, Gabriella has got a world record in bench press, and sometimes she'll be setting it up, and some guy will come over and go, "Oh, do you need she a spot, love?" <laughs> and literally, and she'll be, oh, "Okay, but just don't touch the bar. Do not touch the bar, okay?" <laughs> and she can rep out with six, like a plate of size, six, That's and great. and they'll be, they'll they'll take it off and just hold the bar for like nearly doing an upright row, and then rack <laughs> it and go, "Oh, it was all you, love." And <laughs> you know that sort of behaviour. Mm. It's not great. Yeah. It's not optimal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> any other questions you've got for her? Gabriella just shouldn't be allowed to train when you're not there, man. Just to like, you know, keep an eye on things. She, um, I can't get her to train at the moment. She's retired. Maybe you could train Gabriella because she's, uh, she's lost a mojo. Maybe she could train me. Yeah. She, she's, um, she's lost a mojo at the moment. Yeah, that's can train good. together. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, she hates training legs, actually. And you like training legs. So that might, that actually I might work. train legs. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. She go, you go through phases, I guess. I just can't. Mm. My 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 sort of madness won't let me not train. When you hear this, <laughs> so I'm changing the subject completely. When you hear this, we might get pulled off YouTube. No, I only do it for two seconds. Okay, you know what that is? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Dre. Yeah. <laughs> you busy tomorrow night? <laughs> Why? Do you have any plans tomorrow night? I've got to work till I got to work till eight o'clock. Oh, okay. Who's playing? I'd like to see your pickup line. Snoop. No, there is an orchestra playing music from Dr. Dre 2001. No way. The, the Chronic. Rock. Yes. And I've been given two tickets by Jen, who, Jen from the gym. Right. She was going to go, but she has um, 
registration for her competition. Right, right, Friday right. night, and it starts at nine p.m. I can do that. And, That'd be awesome. And Jade can't go. Or, okay. Well, someone has to look after the kids, so right, she okay. has said to me, "Why don't you ask someone to go with you?" Okay. Now we're there. That'd be awesome. So the orchestra is playing that, that album, so cool. that Dr. Dre's whole album. Yeah. Okay. And I'm presuming they will have Dr. Dre's voice over. Them. Well, no, we could rap. <laughs> they could get us to rap. <laughs> da 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 da. It's, it's the, the motherfucking <laughs> we should, white white guys. All <laughs> white guys shouldn't be rapping. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right, cool. All oh, right, excited. I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's close to here, more ish, more park. Oh yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, kid. Um, all right. Now we should you should plug your um anything you want to plug like you. Are you sponsored by people? You sponsored yeah, by? Yeah, I'm sponsored by Fit Nutrition. Yes. One day. Hey, you're also a massive. Is, is it a supplement day. shop? One day. It's a supplement store. Yes. Is that, Zars? Is that Zars? The, <coughs> he just got it, didn't he? Used yeah, to. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and maybe in Bonner Junction. Bonner yeah. Junction. Just, yeah. Right. Um, you you used to be you a massage therapist as well. Yeah, I've had a massage business. Okay. Yeah. And um, why did you stop that? I same same reason. Massage. Guys kept being on that. <laughs> well, it was a problem in Sydney. Yeah. I just wouldn't book them in. Yeah. But I've worked with chiropractors doing massage. I used to massage the football teams, like all the rugby oh, players. Oh, boys. <laughs> how, how did they handle that? <laughs> well, it was a tough gig for me too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Tough life. Um, they could go so just many ways. Just busy with personal training. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Um, Right, so um, if if cli- if legitimate clients want to yes. hit you up, what's the yes. best way to contact you? You well, got Bondi L on Instagram. Yes, Bondi L on Instagram. Just yep. send me through a message. Slide into your DMs. Ask any questions. That's it. <laughs> where, where did Bondi L come? Yeah, from? I was gonna say because you're not from Bondi. Right? <clears throat> That's a good question. Apart from the fact that you do some training there, yeah, she looks sort of well, Bondi. I'm used to Bondi around Bondi, 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 Bondi like all the time. It's not like it doesn't fit. I'm just like, was there another L that took your name? Like L McPherson. So then I claimed it. Look, yes. when, did is, you name it or did someone else name it? This is how it came apart. About, I was at a New Year's Eve party mm. and back then I was sponsored with ASM, okay. the competitor. Yeah. And my Instagram name was L Cripper ASM. The only reason I got Instagram was because ASM told me to. I didn't even know what about this Insta, whatever right, it was. Right. Anyway. So and now you've got 37,000 followers. New Year's Eve party and, and one of my friends grabbed my phone and he's like, L Cripper ASM, worst Instagram name I've ever heard of. And he's like, chick, 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 chick. Gave me back my phone. He said, from now on, you're Bondi L. Right. And, and I you, and you were, from now on, you're Bondi L. So right, and it stuck. That's pretty good. Party. Pretty I was good. messaging and him. I was messaging him going, Bondi L's going to be on the podcast. And, and, and he's <laughs> like, I think we can just call her L. <laughs> 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 it's like a superhero. Well, yeah. Bondi, you she's got a big B on your chest. I've been at the Nike store in Lulu and the person serving me will be like, are you? Bondi L. Are you? Is your? Are you Bondi L? Isn't that cute? Isn't that cool? Well, now maybe I could be Bondi Kib. Well, you could be. <coughs> well, now you're gonna like after, no. after this, you're gonna be. Are you, are you Bondi L from the Push Podcast? Yes, <laughs> you are. That was me. Yes. On that note, uh, I think we'll leave it there. Anything else you want to add, Kev? Um. Da 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 da. I'm excited. Ah, <clears throat> uh, I want to mention um. That bodybuilder that you. Showed me Josh Sorry. Wade. Oh yeah, yeah. <coughs> Who competed in the 2019 Pro uh, New York New York Pro? Pro? Do you follow any of the like men's bodybuilding, oh, like the big, the big freaks? I'll watch the main shows, but not right. so much at the moment. Right. Yeah. Um. He's he's, he's forty. He's over forty, mm-hmm. and he's like rising up through the family pro ranks. Kids yeah. and. Uh, Trains super hard and mm. he can actually string a sentence together too, which is quite yeah. Cool. He's this guy, he's got he gets up at like four, three thirty to do his cardio. Um, he's got a it's all structured, yeah, out. yeah. <clears throat> Gym owner, he works, he works full time, like yeah, and works, trains people, mm. trains wow. people from like 6 a.m. Yep. He gets to the gym early enough to do his own cardio first and then mm. start his, yeah. and then shower yep. and get and open the gym, and get ready, yep. and train his first client by six. Yeah, yeah. And he's working like 12 hours a day training clients. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty inspiring. While he does prep mm. for the Olympia and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. So, and he's father of two, is it? Mm. Young kids, about six or yeah. seven. Wow. Um, and he just, he gets the job done. And yeah. he's over 40. And yeah. he's people, some people have said, you're, you're past it, you'll never make it to mm. the top level. But he gets the grind done yeah doesn't he? no it's pretty inspiring how did he mm. go in that competition do you know that, they'd last <laughs> did he no, really? no, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> he, 
he um <laughs> he hasn't he's got like he's got, he, he's, he hasn't, he's got he's got the prettiest shape right you know blocky waist sort of white guy sort of genetics you know blocky waist and but he's a tank and he gets in really sh good shape mm. the, the reason i sent it to you is because he was saying <clears throat> and you'd agree with this al the one th look you can't your genetics and your skeletal, skeletal structure to a great degree is given to you by your parents you can't change mm -hmm. it but one thing you have control over completely is what you put in your mouth like mm -hmm. the food food you eat right yeah. so you can <clears throat> and he was saying so you there's can control the condition yeah that there's never should be a reason yeah. that you get on stage out of yeah. shade yeah that's because right. it's wholly within your control yes yeah and um yeah i think that's something well, that that's that's mm -hmm. like that's like there's there's fatties right I mean, it's they can control how they look like you can either look like chubby mm. or you can look like l mm. if you're wanting to put the work in yes right i mean you can they can yeah they just don't because they don't have the discipline because <clears throat> they're, like, they're body positive on that note i'm well, steve machine Curran. kevin big daddy award and, and had l cooper bondi l bondi l thanks peace out <laughs>